Our lesson today is about photosynthesis. This is the third part, production of organic matter. Let's see. In this part, we will summarize the photosynthesis process by a picture that shows all the processes and the actions that happen in this process. As you can see, I have a green plant, which is the chlorophyllic plant. They put for us the needs of the plant taken from its surrounding and then the products of this plant. Let's at the beginning look at the arrows. If you see that the arrows, they are pointed toward the plant, that means these are the needs of the plant. For example, the blue arrow here, it is toward the plant, so that means the plant needs carbon dioxide. I have here the water plus mineral salt and an arrow that is pointed to the plant, so plant needs water and mineral salts. Also, we studied before that for the plant to make its own food, it must have the sunlight. So plant needs sunlight, water and minerals, and carbon dioxide to make its own food. The food will be made in the leaves, and when it is made, we studied that, the oxygen and the uh, sugar, which is the starch, will be released. And these, they were confirmed in previous experiments shown in previous video. You can uh, go back to these videos in my channel. So we said that chlorophyllic plants make their own food in the leaves. That's why we call them, they are producers, because they produce their own food to have energy. This process is called photosynthesis. Also in photosynthesis, plants make sugar, which is called the starch, and release oxygen through stomata. The stomata, what are these? Stomata, they are cells found at the opening of the leaves. In leaves, they are just like the sieve, or they have small openings, or pores. Through these pores, the gas is uh, taken and released. As you can see, I have a gas that is taken, which is the carbon dioxide, and another gas that is released, which is the oxygen. The release and the intake of the gas happens through these cells. That's why the function of the stomata is to exit change the gas materials or the gaseous uh, molecules through them between the air and the leaves. Also, the starch made by the plants is an organic matter called elaborated sap. This is the elaborated sap, which is the blue one. Okay, the elaborated sap, it contains the sugar made by the plant. It will be carried by the vessels that are in the stem. These vessels, they will carry the elaborated sap to all the parts, not only keeping in the leaves because all the parts need this starch in order to grow. The excess organic matter, so the plant will use some of this organic matter to grow, to have energy and to stay alive, but I still have excess organic matter. The extra organic matter, they will be stored for further needs. They will be stored in organs such as tubers or fruits. The tuber here, it will be stored below the soil Oh, the excess organic matter, the excess sugar, it will be stored above the soil, such as in the fruits. So these are the stored or the storage parts in the plant. Also, as you can see here in the plant, I have roots. Through the roots, the water and mineral source, they will be absorbed. And they will be absorbed by the root hair that will uh, absorb the water and minerals and also they will be carried out if you focus on the red arrow so this is the crude sap i will remind you that crude sap it contains the water and minerals absorbed by the roots and then transported through the vessels to all the plants part so this picture it shows us the two sap that are translocated or uh, transported in the plant. One is transported upward because it's if it was absorbed in the roots and it will be transported up to the leaves, which is the crude sap. Another sap that is made in the leaves, 
and will be transported down to the other parts, which is elaborated sap. These two sap, they are transported through special vessels in the stem. And for sure, the vessels that carry the crude sap are different from the ones that carry the elaborated sap. They do not mix. Okay, so the uh, vessels that carry the crude sap, they are called xylem. Why the vessels, it's name, okay? Why the vessels that carry the elaborated sap, they are called flower. These, they are just names for the vessels as every human, it has its own name. Also the vessels here. So the vessels that carry only the crude sap, which is water and mineral, uh, minerals, it will be called xylem. While the vessels that carry only the elaborated sap and the elaborated sap, it's carried downward because it comes up from the leaves, it will be called the fluid. This is for the whole process of photosynthesis. Let's continue. Now we have a table. As you can see, one column is for the age of the plant in days. So we are uh, studying a plant uh, and this plant is growing from day one until day 42. What we are studying in this plant, we are studying the mass of dry plant matter. The dry plant matter, this is the uh, food, uh, the organic matter that was made inside the plant, but without water. That's why we call it a dry. So dry plant matter, we mean by it the water, uh, sorry, the a product, the organic product, but without water. So the uh, dry plant matter is the product made by the plant without water. The table, if we want to put a title for this table, I told you before the title, it's always the same because it has terms that we always put in the title. The terms are variation of, so we, when, uh, we, when we have a table, we are studying something that is changing. That's why we start our title by variation of. So in this table, what is the factor that is changing? It's the mass of a dry plant, which is in grams as they uh, write in the table. And then as function, of the age of the uh, plant in days. So here, variation of, this is the constant term that I must always put it in the title, mass of dry plant matter in grams. This is what they put for us in the table. I'm studying the change of this uh, dry plant matter with what? I'm studying according to the age of the plant. That's why I must put as function of the age of the plant in this. Now, what do we see? We see that the mass of the dry matter, it is increasing with the age. Because for example, in day one, the mass was 0 0.12. At the fifth day, the mass became 0 0.15. So it's increasing. It's becoming higher or greater or more. At day 14, it became 0 0.25. At day 28, it became 0 0.82. At 35, it became 1.47. At 42, it became 1.97. What, uh, what I am seeing now, it's analyzing the table. So I'm analyzing, I'm reading what I have as results in the table. Okay, so this is analyzing, reading only what I, what I see. So I see that the mass is increasing with the age. Now, if I want to draw a conclusion to uh, say what is happening or what is the cause of this increase with age, we can conclude that this increase is due to the process of photosynthesis. So why the mass is increasing, why the mass uh, becomes higher or greater with uh, age? Because with age, the plant is making photosynthesis, so it is producing more starch. So this more starch, day after day, it, is, uh, it will be dry. So it's uh, making a certain uh, mass in the plant, okay? 
So this is how we analyze the table and we draw a conclusion. Okay, so in this video, we learned that in photosynthesis, I have two sets that are transported in the plant. One is called elaborated that contains the organic matter, which is the starch, and it will be transported through the flow and downward. While I have the elaborated sap, which is absorbed by the roots, it contains the water and the minerals, and it will be transported through vessels upward. These vessels we call them xylem. Okay, by this, I will finish this video. If you like it and you find it helpful and useful, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to like my video. See you in next videos, inshallah.